This is the sound of a Mocha Express pot. It is a simple stovetop pot that makes coffee without spending any time waiting for filtering or cooking. All we need to do is pour water in the vessel, place the grounded coffee in the funnel, and place it on a stove on medium high heat, and wait for the coffee to rise. Yet the small appliance is complex and interesting. Engineered from the principles of thermodynamics and fluids, take advantage of the pressure difference from heating uh, water and vapor. The stove can now act as both a heating source and a sort of energy that filters the coffee. In this video, I will explore the physics behind the Mocha Express pot and investigate the variables that affect coffee extraction. A Mocha Express pot has three chambers. One is the water vessel, where we put the water such that it's below the pressure valve. This valve makes sure that gas is released when the pressure reaches dangerous levels or the vessel actually might explode. On top of the water chamber, we have our coffee funnel, which we put our grind coffee in at the max line. The funnel also has a tube that connects it to the water chamber. On top of the funnel, we have an attachable coffee collector where all the coffee is extracted. The bottom of this part also has a metal, metal filter and a rubber gasket. So you may be wondering, how does heating the vessel make the water go against gravity and move up the tube? In short, the tube takes advantage of pressure difference, which is, which is caused by increased saturated vapor pressure in the top of the vessel when compared to the atmospheric pressure in the coffee collector. So since pressure moves from higher pressure to lower pressure, the fluid is given a certain velocity and spritz out of the tube into the coffee collector. So eventually, when we heat the mocha express pot, on the stove. The water will eventually move through the tube connecting the heating vessel and the coffee collector. So here's the diagram of our Mocha Express pot uh, at its initial pressure without any heating. So the water is at room temperature and the seal is locked so that our air inside uh, in the vessel is constant. So here at the pressure at A, or at the light gray area, which is the air above the water, you can use uh, PV equals NRT to calculate the initial pressure. But we mostly will be using this equation to measure the, the number of air molecules that are present inside the sealed lock. Given the same model, what if when we add heat, to the heating vessel, the water, the temperature of the water and the air inside will increase. And since the water evaporates and it's in a closed system, there will be a vapor pressure and the vapor pressure will increase uh, since the steam is trapped inside here. And it, thus the, the pressure, the total pressure of the light gray area of air will increase. So our vapor pressure can be approximated using this equation, which produces the pressure in atmospheric uh, ATM and T as in Kelvin. And all we need to do is add up these two um, pressures to get the total pressure in the light gray area. And that is the pressure that pushes down on the surface area of the water and so the pressure at A will be great, greater than the one at C. Right now, we'll be exploring some other factors that affect coffee extraction. So the first one is Darcy's Law of Linear Filtration, which describes the pressure drop uh, when an incompressible fluid is flowing through a porous medium. So in order to calculate this, we had to use this equation, which calculates the minimum pressure uh, that the water vessel needs in order for water to move up tube. So another factor that we need to take account of is equilibrium. So when the water moves off the tube, the volume of air in A increases. And because of that, the pressure in A also decreases and is uh, equal to C. Mm -hmm.